Great morning, my extremely great champions. Hope you're all feeling massive love and passion and making that dream life of yours come true. Today we're gonna to go on a really small adventure together, mainly gonna be hanging out at the condo. But uh, excitingly and amazingly, I wanna share my story with you, which I have learned, which the, what is the biggest difference between uh, Thai people and foreigners, and of course, what I hate the most. If you don't know who we are, I'm Ryan, this is my vlog. That uh, is Kenzo, my son, the greatest champion in the world, Lalita, my gorgeous wife, the absolute best thing that's ever happened to me. And we're here in Thailand living our dream, making videos every single day. And all we want to do is uh, have mad fun together, make you feel great and share our story with you. So tickle that subscribe button and let's take it to the next level. My champions, just to, to fill you in on the, the new gym situation, I just want to show you what I'm working with. So for squats, that's definitely the hardest, but for leg extensions, I'm having to improvise to a whole new level. So basically, there's no leg extension machine at all. So I'm having to take a, a dumbbell and actually, just, just for this video, I'm showing you just one. But I take two, I put one on each beat, and then it becomes a balancing act. But this is, this is still mild for squats. Actually, there's, there's not even one single plate, so I have to put a towel at the back of the feet in place of the plate. And then I basically take the, the dumbbell, and then it's just basically a situation of like, yeah. So that's where we're at. And then when it comes to calves, I mean, that's a whole different game altogether. So this is, this is where we're at with calves. Not even a single calf machine, so actual free weight or dumbbell, and then again a balancing act. So while it's not the best setup, best setup or best situation I've ever had, I'm gonna make it work because as far as time is concerned, it saves so much. It's not even eight o'clock and I'm already out of here. This is honestly one of the things that I love most about where we stay because of the climate and the humidity and more precisely because of the location of Thailand um, in relation to Indonesia, the amount of um, you know, reptiles and, and, and amphibians available here is just astronomical. In fact, Thailand boasts one of the largest um, herpetological society <laughs> members, which means the most people here are very, very interested in, in reptiles and amphibians. Babe, just take one out. It's so awesome. Oh. Oh, is this a book place? Yes. Oh, okay. Please have a look how tiny the elevator is here where we stay. Like Lalita's already tiny. She only weighs 43 kilograms. But come on guys, this is like, you have to get on it sideways basically. So now we're just gonna head off on out to the, where are we gonna go now Lalita? You wanna get some food, right? Yes, sure. So we just got back from our walk. Um, and since I, had been in Thailand after about the first three months I've been wanting to make this video and share with all of my friends and share with the world the biggest difference and my pet peeves between Thai people and uh, foreigners and the first thing that I learned when I moved to Thailand was that people in Thailand actually take their shoes off so whenever you enter your home in Thailand you, everyone it is just normal to take your shoes off there's a whole separate room just for your shoes and of course coming from the west just like blew my mind because in the west it's totally normal for us to actually wear our shoes in the house the other thing is in the west when you go to the toilet and make a, a little uh, poofy then, <laughs> then what you do is you just use toilet paper uh, wash your hands and you're out of the door and that's the end of it but here every single toilet has an actual um, spraying mechanism and like it's just normal like everyone here makes it when they make a little uh, or something like that they spray it the, the, the next phase is like um, actually spraying right and also when I came here I was like whoa this is amazing it takes so much getting used to in the beginning the other thing is like in the Western world when you are commuting anywhere from point A to point B if you get a fine like that fine symbolizes the end of that journey until you fix that issue here though if you get a fine let's say you're driving your motorbike with no helmet and like you head you're heading out and the police are there and they see you and they stop you and they give you a fine for not wearing a helmet just so long as you keep that invoice with you you can keep 
you can drive without a helmet for the next seven days like you you just pay and give invoice and then you are you have permission to drive without a helmet for the next seven days also it just blew my mind the other thing is and this kind of got me a little bit uh, going in the beginning in the western world if you have a problem with your food you just like raise your hand the manager comes and uh and he sorts it out he'll take it back and he'll give you a new one um Another thing is the manager in the Western world is always come in and they're like, hey, is your food okay? Is there anything we can do to make you happier? Here, though, okay, and I'm not talking about like five-star restaurants. I'm talking about the normal restaurants on the actual, like just Thai restaurants where normal Thai people go. Um, like if you have a problem with your food and you complain, like I've seen it on three different occasions. They actually like um, chase you out. Like if you're complaining about your food, okay, if you're not happy, there's the door. The other thing is that like in, in, um, in South, South Africa specifically, everyone is so friendly. Everyone's always greeting each other, WhatsApp, reaching out, connecting, building uh, connections, building friends. Here, people, if they don't know you, they don't greet you. And this, till this day, get, get blows my mind. Like I um, love being in the lift, someone arrives in, a nice smile, start connecting, when the journey of the lift is over, came by a nice meeting and that's the end. But here, whoa, even when I greet the people, they, they like, good morning, they get a fright. It's like, whoa. And the other thing is, tipping is just unheard of. You know, like where I come from, every time you pay for the bill, you just naturally add on 10%. And, uh, you know, thank you so much. <laughs> um, another thing here, the food courts. Don't accept cash at all. So you're either going to be given, like you're going to pay up front and get a card, like a, a very, very clean credit card. And uh, the reason why they do this is because they don't want the staff handling cash, like maybe through steal or whatever. And they don't want the staff handling cash because they don't want their hands to get dirty from touching the money. And also it's just so much quicker. The, the places here are so busy that they don't um, want to waste time trying to find change and everything. So the, the other way is you arrive and they just give you a thousand baht, which is like $500, which is about, uh, sorry, a thousand baht, which is like 500 rand, which is about $50. Um, so, so they just give you that. You, you get credit and you can just buy whatever you want and not up to a thousand baht. And then when you leave, you just, you just um, settle it, you know? Uh, and then, of course in the Western world, um, we've never seen that. We only know arrive, eat, and then pay. The other thing is the tax here, like um, Thailand has got 300% luxury tax, which means if you're buying um, a, a Rolex or, or fragrances or designer clothes, it's going to be much more. Like for example, the Rolls Royce Phantom here is um, $1, million, $1 million instead of $300,000. Um, the other thing is that uh, Thai, Thai people are obsessed about babies, like to the extent that We'll be walking and they'll just come and totally ignore me, you know, and ignore Lalita and put all attention to Kenzo. Um, another thing here is uh, Thai girls. 90% of Thai girls don't wear G-strings, um, whereas 90% of um, South African girls do wear G-strings. Here, um, there will be actually there will actually be signs saying no Russians allowed or no Chinese allowed, no Israelis. Like at the at the foot at the entrance of the restaurant, you will see signs like that. Whereas if there was anywhere else in the world, and you had to say no X Y Z race is not allowed in here, it would cause so much uh, turmoil. The other thing that I learned like very soon after arriving here is how free this place is. Like Thailand is super understanding like if you if you weird right like if you are a, a man that wants to be a woman or a woman that wants to be a man or if you want to dress like super 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 strange like in other countries you might be mocked for for that whereas here the people here are so beautiful and so gentle and i've seen people that that that, that look like they're from another planet walking past and other people don't even look at them they definitely don't speak bad about them so that's the other thing like super super free and really um, understanding of the differences like everyone's different in Thailand the people in Thailand naturally are very understanding of each other's differences and other things a lot of people think that Thailand is a poor country where it is not at all they are much 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 more uh, um, luxury uh, shops here and luxury shopping going on like shops that we don't even have like full Hermes shops uh, full Christian Louboutin shops um, and the other thing is that like if you have a look at the SCB private, ba private banking like where I come from in South Africa everyone has private banking but here to get private banking you need 50 million 
bought, which is like 16 million dollars in your account just to have a private banking account and there's one section in the one mall here called Siam Paragon where there's a whole SCB lounge so everyone there has got 50 million baht in their account just liquid and it is full all the time and I went in there and I asked them like what are your prerequisites and they're like private bank and that's it and then the other thing is like the girls here will never if you like a Thai girl will never ever try and dominate or like become loud or try and overpower a situation whereas I've seen like other uh, western girls they, they might be inclined to try and take a uh, reign or take control of a situation and then the last thing um, is that Thai girls never expect like the man to uh, treat them and as, a, as an equal I know that a lot of uh, countries the woman really want to be they're like oh man and woman is equal and there's this whole like story this whole debate that's going on and uh, yeah, what I've noticed is that Thai girls know that they are girls and the Thai men know that they are men and, and, and they understand girls don't try and have the same rights as men because they understand that a man, it's his job to provide and it's his job to be a man and the, the men also don't like get confused about being a man like they know that they've got their, their responsibilities as a dad and as a, as, a, as, a, as a provider and as a husband, you know, so I've seen that in the Western world, there's, be, there's this kind of thing where the girls want to be equal to men, um, and yet they also at the same time want men to pay, pay for them. Whereas here, it's not like that. Like it's culturally, Thai women go crazy looking after their men. Like for example, Alita, she's the most phenomenal experience that I've ever happened in my whole life. She gets my, she makes my, my slippers for me every single morning and every evening. She makes my the towels all really smelling amazing. She makes the toothbrushes for me. I actually wake up and the toothbrush is made. You know, if I get up for one second, she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "No, I just want to get food." She's like, "No, sit down. I'm going to do it." And we've we've been together for like three years now, so it's not like this is like a honeymoon phase. So culturally, Thai girls really go out of their way every second of every day to try and make their men feel like men. And I feel that that is such a a vital part in any, any relationship or the success of any relationship for each party to know their their jobs and then to do their jobs as best as they can all the time guys i got to end off here the vlogs are becoming too long i hope we've helped you and in at least some way i hope we've added value to you in at least some way thank you so much for your time thank you so much for watching join the happiness movement smile at strangers compliment everyone be a champion be different be phenomenal see you tomorrow